Our next course is about 5G and our call flows. Let's get started. Our first topic is 5G NR SA registration or attached call flow. A 5G standalone architecture includes 5G UE, G Node B and 5G core network. In this slide, we will discuss about 5G standalone registration call flow for OTA messages between UE and G Node B and NG application protocol messages between G Node B and 5G core AMF. In 5G standalone mode, term registration is equal to attach in 4G LTE. At high level, 5G SA registration call flow includes following steps as shown in the figure. Achieving downlink or uplink sync via SSB decode and RATCH procedure then SRB0 establishment with RRC connection request, then contention resolution and SRB1 establishment with RRC setup, next is registration request, then NAS procedures like UE identity transfer, authentication and security, then ASUE capability transfer and AS security. Next is SRB2 and DRB establishment. Next comes registration complete and PDU session establishment. Cell search and downlink synchronization. Cell search is a procedure by which a UE acquires time and frequency synchronization with a cell, decode the cell ID and PBCH MIB information. Next comes uplink synchronization UE can achieve uplink synchronization by RATCH procedure all RATCH access related parameters UE can retrieve from system information 1 for RATCH procedure UE select a random preamble this preamble is referenced with the RAP ID UE also starts a timing T300 to await the RRC setup message from the G node B. Then we will look into RRC connection request. RRC connection request is considered as message 3 and it includes UE identity, establishment cause. The UE identity can be a random number between 0 and 2 to the power 39 minus 1 and will be used to contention resolution by UE while decoding message 4 RRC connection setup. RRC connection request is sent on the uplink grant provides in message 2 from the G node B and over SRB0 on uplink common control channel. Next comes RRC setup. The RRC setup message is sent to setup SRB1 contention resolution and the master cell configuration. The UE stops the timer T300 as it has received the RRC setup message. It carries following information elements, those are radio bearer config and master cell group. Then next comes RRC setup complete plus registration request. The UE sends the RRC setup complete message with a registration request in the dedicated NAS message. It also carries the information about selected PLMN identity, registered AMF, SNSS AI list. Registration request also carries UE network capability information. The G node B selects the access and mobility function AMF for this session and allocate RAN UE N gap ID to the UE. The AMF will use this ID to address the UE context on the G node B. Next is initial UE message. The G node B sends the initial UE message to the selected AMF. The message carries the registration request message received from the UE in the RRC setup complete message. The RAN UE NGAP ID and the RRC establishment cause are also included in the message. 
UE identity transfer is a conditional. If there is a change in last AMF selected by G node B and SUCI is not provided by the UE nor retrieved from the old AMF, then identity request procedure is initiated by AMF sending an identity request to the UE requesting the SUCI. The UE responds with identity response including the SUCI. The UE responds with identity response including the SUCI. The UE derives the SUCI by using the provisioned public key of the HPLMN. Next comes authentication and NAS security. The core network performs authentication procedure for the UE is legitimate and legally authorized to get service from the network. The AMF signals the selected NAS security algorithm to the UE and requests the IMEISV from the UE as part of NAS security mode command. UE respond with completion of the NAS security procedure and contains the IMEISV in security mode complete. Next is initial context setup request. The AMF allocates an AMF UE NGAP ID. The G node B will use this ID to address the UE context on the AMF. AMF sends an initial context setup request message to G node B to start the initial context establishment process. The message typically contains the registration accept NAS message. The message carries one or more PDU session setup requests. The message also carries the AMF UE NGAP ID. UE aggregate maximum bit rate, UE security capabilities and security key. Then comes ASUE capability transfer and AS security. G node B can acquire the UE capability with UE capability inquiry and information. After receiving from UE capability, G node B update these capabilities to AMF. The G node B sends a security mode command message to the UE to notify the UE to start the integrity protection and encryption process. After that, downstream encryption is started. The UE derives the key according to the integrity protection and encryption algorithm indicated by the security mode command message and then replies the security mode complete message to the G node B. After that, the upstream encryption is started. Then comes SRB2 and DRB establishment. The G node B issues an RRC reconfiguration message to the UE to establish SRB2 and DRB. After SRB2 and DRB are successfully established, the UE replies to the G node B with an RRC reconfiguration complete message. The G node B signals the successful setup DRB with initial context setup response message to the AMF. Next is registration complete and PDU session establishment. UE sends registration complete and PDU session establishment request to AMF. PDU session establishment is similar to PDN connectivity request message in LTE. AMF sends a PDU session resource setup request message to G node B carrying the list of PDU sessions that needed to be established, the list of QoS flows for each PDU sessions and the quality attributes of each QoS flow. The G node B maps the QoS flow to the QoS flow according to the quality attributes of the QoS flow. G node B sends NAS PDU session establishment accept. Here I conclude this course. Hope you understand all the concepts clearly. Meet you in the next course. If you have any queries, please get in touch with us by typing your comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Do like and subscribe to our videos. So what are you waiting for? Join us for the course and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon. Also, if you like our videos, don't forget to hit the like button and share our videos.